I'm Danica Lohr, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today I'm very pleased to welcome Glenda Gertson. Glenda, welcome to Lit Happens. Thank you. So let's start at the beginning. What drew you to want to be a writer? Well, I started to write when I was four years old because I ran out of books to read. I had asthma that kept me in bed quite a bit, so uh, I burned through that stack of books pretty quickly. And I made some picture books for myself to read. My uh, mother wrote down the words for me. By the time I was in high school, I was writing novels. And they were mostly science fiction and fantasy novels. I wrote The Prairie Dogs when I was in high school, but uh, it was just for fun. I was focused on these fantasy novels. That's what I wanted to publish when I grew up. So much to my surprise, it was uh, The Prairie Dogs that caught the publisher's attention and was published in 2005. And uh, it was followed by The City Dogs and Miracle Dogs. And, and they're connected, they're, they're yes, a series. Yes, this is the Prairie Dogs Adventure Series. Uh, the Prairie Dogs is about Pierre, a champion agility poodle from Montreal, whose owners accidentally abandon him in a small prairie town. So Pierre knows nothing about the prairie, nothing about small town life, and he has to survive an entire summer as a stray dog. Oh no. <laughs> So that's, that's got to be a, a real fish out of water, a dog yes, out of the city exactly, type of a story. Yes. And Pierre not only con confronts a whole new situation, but new species of birds and other animals. And Pierre, to begin with, is kind of a, a bigot. He's got a bad attitude toward mongrel dogs and these small town creatures. And he befriends a mongrel dog named Dare, who has a problem with cats. And together they take care of an abandoned puppy who was raised by a cat and thinks she's a kitten. <laughs> and the fourth member of their little pack is Mouse, the fainting chihuahua who's addicted to bugs. And so, uh, who, what's the audience for, the, for this series? What are the... Age seven to 11 for, for the children's books. And uh, are they um, found across Saskatchewan? And, and where are some of the places that you can find, find this series? They're in uh, all the major bookstores. You can order them online from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and uh, the other online stores. Okay, and so now we're going to move into your your YA novel. Now, is, is yes. this taking you into the science fiction that yes, you always wanted finally. to write? Yes, yeah. Although it didn't start off as science fiction fantasy. What, what? Tell me a little bit about the route that brought this book about then. Well, about 15 years ago, I was going through this phase where I couldn't seem to find anything to read in science fiction and fantasy. I probably wasn't just looking hard enough, but uh, it seemed to me that the same plots and characters were being recycled and the whole genre was taking itself too seriously. It also seemed to be lacking in adventurous female characters. So I was currently working on a contemporary novel that takes place in Saskatoon and it suddenly seemed to me that Saskatoon was too small for my main character's sense of adventure. So I threw in the entire universe. Suddenly this teenage girl devel develops the ability to travel from world to world, meeting many strange characters along the way. And uh, that is how the Lady Oak Abroad Chronicles came about. And so just like when you were four years old, motiva motivated by the need to find something that you mm -hmm. were interested in. Yes, it's nothing to fill a gap. And so tell me a little bit about the story. Well, Audrey is a Saskatoon teenager who has been having a very bad year. She was hit by a bus. Her boyfriend dumped her. In chapter one, the uh, school principal expels her. So she comes home and finds that her uh, aunt has disappeared. So in the course of looking for, for her, she finds this giant portal to another universe in her front yard. So she goes chasing after her aunt. And when she finds her aunt, she thinks, well, this is the adventure I've been looking for all my life. Fantasy adventure, because she's a, a big science fiction fan. But she discovers that nothing is what she expects. All the stereotypes that she's learned from watching TV and books are completely blown away. And she also learns that nobody is what they seem, not her neighbors, not her, her own aunt, not the queen of the new world that she discovers. So it's a huge learning curve for her. And at the same time, she's developing this ability she has to not only travel from world to world, but manipulate those worlds 
And of course, the local power mongers find out about this and decide that kidnapping and exploiting her should be on their to-do lists. Mm -hmm. So the, I guess the dogs, they, you've taken them out of a place that's a little less familiar to us and put us mm -hmm. in a place that's very familiar to us. And with um, the young woman in Lady Oak, you've taken her from a place that's very familiar to us into a place that's very unfamiliar. Exactly. So what is it like working in those worlds that are so different? Well, with the Prairie Dog series, um, I was very familiar with, with the world that the dogs, Pierre especially, moves into the Canadian Prairie because I've done a lot of hiking and camping and I've always been interested in the Saskatchewan environment. And I wanted to introduce that to children in a way that they can relate to through um, an animal that, that lives through his senses. I thought, well, how better to do that than through the eyes of a small dog? because the Canadian prairie is best experienced at ground level. And then taking us into a completely different world with the, with the new book. So how, does, how did creating that world um, feel to you? Oh, it felt very liberating, like all these wild and crazy ideas I had in my head could finally be spilled onto the pages. And I had also accumulated quite a bit of ecological knowledge from the libraries I've worked in. Um, the, the Forestry Library, the National Hydrology Institute, the Wildfire Management Library, and now the Science Library at U of S. So along the way I've been collecting all these interesting ecological facts that could be applied to these worlds that Audrey travels to with some exaggeration. And how long did it take to, to do all that collecting and to actually create this book that, that we now have uh, sitting right here in front of us? Well, it's gone through many uh, revisions, of course. I had to revise the first edition, first draft to uh, make it fantasy and science fiction. And then with each rewrite, I was adding more and more that I was learning along the way from, from a scientific point of view. Although it might be a bit of a stretch to call it science fiction because obviously about 99% of what happens that, in that book could not possibly happen. And so, and this is also part of a series? Yes, I call it the uh, Audio Crane Chronicles. There are two more books on the way. And you're working on those as we speak? I am. Also on a fourth uh, Prairie Dogs adventure novel. It's going to be called Dinosaur Dogs and it takes place in the great sand hills of southwest Saskatchewan where Pierre and his friends become lost and have to survive in the wilderness. Wow. So you're taking us near, you're taking us far, and and your books, uh, one more time, where can we find Lady Oak? Is, is it in the stores as well? It is, the major stores. Um, you can also download it from Amazon or Kobo as an ebook. Excellent. And, and the, the dog books, are they illustrated as well? They are. Each of the books is illustrated by a different artist. The uh, Prairie Dogs was illustrated by a picture book artist. The uh, City Dogs was illustrated by a television animation artist from Toronto. So two very different styles. And I illustrated Miracle Dogs. It was my first attempt at illustrating a book. Excellent. Well, I look forward to delving into these worlds. And thank you so much for coming and talking to us today. That's all the time we have. Oh, thank you. This is Lit Happens. I'm Danica Lore. You can find other episodes by going to YouTube and checking out Shaw TV Saskatoon. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. And you can contact me at danicalore at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.